Jason with uh, PremierGuitar.com and we're at the Winter NAMM Show 2011 in California. We're here with Seymour Duncan and with the original uh, Telly. Telly Gib. Telly Gib, you call yeah. it. And I uh, just announced that you're going to be making 35 more right. uh, based on this with Larrabee. So tell me a little bit about how uh, this originally came together with, uh, with you and Jeff. Well, when I was in England uh, working at the Fender Soundhouse, I had a, a Telecaster that I had taken from America over there. And um, I, I, I came from Cincinnati, and it was near where Lonnie Mack used to live. You know, he lived in Indiana. And so when I had gone over, I had actually uh, had a bunch of parts with me when I went to work. And I got, uh, I did a job application at the Fender Soundhouse for uh, work with a guy named Ron Roca and Ivor Arbiter, who did the Arbiter Fuzz Face for Jimi Hendrix and everything. I went there and he says, well, you got to do uh, like a scheduled interview of what you can do. And I said, well, just let me work. You know, I'll just work for nothing, you know. And I did like 25 guitars in two days. You know, they were like blown away that I repaired all these guitars. I fixed pickups. I did setups. I did frets and everything. So uh, they hired me at the Fender Soundhouse. And then while I was there, I built uh, the first Tele game, which I called a Tele game. And the, uh, I had two humbuckers that came out of an uh, old broken flying V that belonged to Lonnie Mack. And so I had gone all over the place looking for uh, electronic components and I went to a motor winding shop in London and I found a, a couple of spools of wire. I found a spool of 42 and a spool of uh, 44. It was like heavy form work. So uh, I started experimenting and I made a couple models and I, I wound it and I stripped it and I said, man, listen to this, man, this pickup. And uh, it just had this certain tone to it, which was so cool. It had a lot of sustain, and you could use the volume control to bring up the actual swells of it, you know? And almost like a Roy Buchanan kind of thing, but it had a fatter sound. So the neat thing about it is I built this guitar, and uh, right across the street was uh, uh, the CBS Studios from uh, Tottenham Court Road, where I was working at the Fender Soundhouse. And um, I took this guitar over and I said, Jeff, man, I, I made you something. I think it's a cool workhorse. And I, I'm just calling it the Kelly Gibb. And, uh, but it was a, a maple neck, or it was a rosewood neck, and I stripped the, the uh, uh, rosewood off of it and I put a, a maple veneer over top of it. And I put Gibson frets in it. So it was almost like a, a Gibson feeling kind of neck. It was a pretty thick neck. But when I put the fingerboard on it, it made it a lot fatter. So I took the guitar to him. And uh, right then and there, he was doing the second BBA album with Beck Bogart and Pete. And he got done, and then uh, I had left to come back to America. And then you know, a couple months later, he did Blow by Blow with George Martin. So he did a song called Calls Me and His Lovers because uh, he liked Roy Buchanan because Roy would do all the swells. And that's what uh, Jeff did. So he would hit the note and he would bring it up. He would hit the note with his finger and then bring it up and then he would get this like a voice volume uh, swell effect, which was really cool. So speaking, speaking of the volume swells, is, will the new model of this have that uh, 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 new fast acting potential? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm using the Horn Spots, which I is actually in this one. I've been using this for 30 years, you know, 30 uh -huh. some, 35 years or more. And this is the guitar that um, it just uh, you know just used it on a bunch of things. Uh, uh, Nokia Edwards has, had used it, uh, Ted Nugent, Peter Frampton's played it. A lot of guys have played this guitar because it had just such a unique tone to it. But this was wound to the JB and this was wound to the JM. And originally I was going at the Jeff Beck and this was called the John Milner. The John Milner was a character in American Graffiti and he had the yellow high boy. And Jeff loved that movie and so I thought I was going to do like a hot rod kind of guitar for him. You know? So I called this the John Milner and the JB. I said, man, I can't call it that. You know, we know what the heck I'm talking about. So when I started making the production models, this became the JM, and then JM jazz model because you can play a lot of notes pretty fast. So I called it that, and then I called this the, the JB for like jazz blues because I didn't want to offend Jeff and use something without his permission or call it his name. You know, but everybody calls it the JB or the, the Jeff Beck, which they're not supposed to, but they still call it that. And so this is an old, um, like a, a 55, 56 body. Uh, it's got the old Finale pickguard that it's like a parts guitar. And this is how I got this body. So somebody previously had uh, 
uh, done this. I don't know who actually did it, but I got this guitar in like 1973, and uh, so I made this my second Kelly game. So Jeff has the first one, and this is the actual second one. Jeff's, I actually used the, the, the three-piece Telly bridge, and I cut it, and I put the humbucker in front of it. So it's like cut right here, and the pickup's like mounted right in front of it. Yeah. You see the, the one he used, too. And you can still see the holes here from the original Telly bridge. And so, to me, you know, I just got it screwed down, and everything's really pretty low profile. And uh, you can see the old, these are old patent applied for mounting rings from the old Flying V from Lonnie Mac. And they're really pretty worn, and uh, so this is the original, you know, 58, 59 uh, patent applied for pickup that I rewound to the JB. So for me, it's got a lot, of, I love, I always love Lonnie Mac. So it's got part of Lonnie Mac, and it's got this that I designed for Jeff. So it's got the whole, and I'm afraid to take it out on the road anymore because it has such a history to it. I'm afraid that it's either going to get stolen or lost or, you know, I'm afraid to fly with it. You know, luggage might get lost or whatever. So I'm re after this show, this guitar is being retired. So I'm going to start using the Larrabee guitar and I hope I can use that for 30 years, 35 years and make it look as worn out as this one, you know. We'll see more. I appreciate you taking the time well, to talk to us. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can find more information about all the new products. You're yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Say goodbye there, Billy Gibb. Say goodbye. That's my baby. Well, thank you. Thank you. This is Jason Shadrick for PremierGuitar.com.